Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, February 9th. Thank you for joining. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, we thank you once again for giving us this opportunity to spend time with you. We pray, Father God, that each and every time we spend with you, that we walk away knowing more about you, knowing more about how to be obedient to you, knowing more about how to give glory to you, to praise you, to worship you, and to thank you. We love you, Father God, and we pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We are in Luke 11, 14 through 28, with titles such as Trust and Obey, Excuses to Not Follow, The Deceit of Half Submission, and Call to Obedience. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebul. Now, if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. In 16, we have others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Do we test God? Do we make promises to God only if he comes through with our prayer requests? How many times do we test God? Do we test God by saying things that maybe we shouldn't be saying? Or do we test God by doing things that maybe we shouldn't be doing? All in asking to see what God's response will be. To see what God's response would be to our sin. To see what God's response would be to our obedience are we continually asking God and is this the only time we listen for God's response do we listen to him when we're grieving do we listen to him when we're praising him how do we test God do we test God and pray about not testing God pray about trusting in God completely in 23 we have Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When we choose to give up the world for Jesus, we have to put our 110% in it. We need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish God's purpose in our lives. We continually need to pray to the Holy Spirit to open up our hearts, to open up our ears, so that we hear God's word. Have the Holy Spirit encourage you, empower you, work with the Holy Spirit to get God's will done, to get be part of God's plan, and be thankful continually that you are included in God's will, that you are included in God's plan. It is about God's will for us. It is about God's plan for us. It is about trusting in God not thinking about our weaknesses, not thinking about our past experiences that didn't go too well. Just trust in God. In 28, it says, he replied, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey. God always promises to bless joyful obedience. 
choosing to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to do what he commands us to do. Maintain a relationship with the Holy Spirit so you hear God's voice. God's ways will never disappoint us. It's all about obedience. And the more we are obedient to God, the more we feel his blessings and the more we want to feel his blessings and the more we want to share those blessings with others. Experiencing God's goodness comes from our obedience. When we come to realize God's will, obey solely on who is doing the talking. It's God who's talking to us. God, our creator, God, our maker, God, who we want to spend eternity to. It's not the man down the street. It's not a neighbor. It's not your teacher. It's God talking to us. Don't we want to be obedient to God, the one who brought us to where we are right now, to the very place where we are in our lives? We should be listening to God, not to other people, not be listening to man. We are to be obedient to God, not to man. It may seem trivial to you, but God always uses others for the bigger plan. It starts out small, but if you are obedient, God brings more people into it. God brings more opportunities into it. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you see the rewards of that little start, that very little simple obedience, what it can lead to and such a blessing it is. God rewards obedience with a sense of peace and joy that compares to nothing this world has to offer. Obeying God in small matters is an essential step in receiving God's greatest blessings. We can't be saying, hopefully we're not saying, it's too difficult, I don't want to do it. I have to pray about it first. I'm not ready. Ask someone else. Let that not be our response when God asks us to do something for him. When God asks us to do something for him, he's also actually asking us to do something for others, bringing others into his kingdom. So there, there are many reasons why God asks for our obedience. There's a bigger picture. We're just part of the small picture most of the time. So just be obedient in the small things. And remember, our obedience always benefits others. We feel the blessings. They feel the blessings. It always benefits others, and it has benefits for us also. And the more you share Jesus, the more you want to share Jesus. The easier it gets, the more you want to do it. You wake up in the morning, I can't wait to share Jesus with someone today. When we obey God, we will never be disappointed. When we obey God, we will walk away saying, I am so thankful to God, to the Holy Spirit, that I went through with what God was asking me to do. I'm so get, glad that I didn't say, not this time, maybe next week I can do it. I, I, I have too much going on at this time. I'm too busy. Be obedient when God asks you to be obedient. Obedience does involve commitment. It does involve courage. But remember, when we're obedient, the Holy Spirit is always with us. He is always there empowering us. He is always there. He's actually putting the words, the thoughts into our heads, into our voices, into our actions. So we don't have to depend on, I'm an insecure person. I'm an introvert. I'm a shy person. Take this step and be blessed. Take this step and be a blessing to someone. In Romans 14, it tells us, if we live, we live for God. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Let's pray that we act like we belong to the Lord. Let's pray that we know we belong to the Lord and we know what our responsibilities are. Our responsibilities, his commandments, to love others, to share Jesus, to share the gospels, to spend time with people. You know, again, we're, we're in COVID and some people still are not coming out. Some people still are not going, coming to church. Reach out to them. Reach out to them. Share the message that you received. Share some prayer that might have been on your heart when you were at church. Reach out to people who have not been coming out because of COVID. Reach out with love. Reach out with humility. Reach out. Maybe just reach out to one person a day. Maybe one person a week. 
reach out to someone who you know is struggling. Someone you haven't seen be at church for a while. Reach out to them. And always remember when we reach out to someone, it's not to say you're a sinner. It's to say, can I help you? Do you have any prayer requests? Always remember that we are sinners ourselves. So we are never to be judging people. Love others. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that each and every one of us opens up our hearts to share you with someone, that each and every one of us be bold, that we come out of our comfort zones, that we contact those whom we have not seen for a while to share you with them. We pray, Father God, that we do not turn our box backs on you, that we continually praise you and thank you and look for opportunities to bless someone because we will be blessed also. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a week filled with Jesus. Tell someone this week that Jesus loves them. Give someone a call. Send them a text message. Send them an email. Reach out to someone that you know may be struggling. Someone that you haven't seen come to church. Reach out to someone and comfort them. God bless you, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>